Okay, here are my colors. Burnt Sienna, Indian Yellow Hue, which is my favorite yellow. It's a warm yellow. Cadmium Red, Medium Hue. Uh, uh, any medium red would probably work. I'm not using my typical primary colors today, nope. These are weird, weird choices, I'm telling you, but I love it. They're just creating all kinds of, you know, drama. <laughs> I'm using Titan Mars Pale right out of the tube. However, the colors that I have here plus white, I can make this color easily without having to buy it. I'm just kind of speeding things up by having it. All right, now here's my Strange Mix Light Thalo Green. Again, this is a color you can mix on your own, but sometimes I buy pre-made colors just to speed things up. Look at that. Look at how interesting that is. Completely in contrast. And then you can either use Van Dyke Brown Hue or Raw Umber plus White. So there's six colors, which is a little bit different from what I usually do. And then for those of you who know me, know me well enough, I love my graphite water soluble graphite I wanted to show you really quick how I did this grid I have a cheater way of doing it so for those of you who want to go quick taping and measuring look just take yourself a little uh, post-it note or anything that's small and square and then trace it and I just eyeball it so these aren't perfectly even it's just good enough good enough much better than perfect because it's done and you're and you're getting things done and that's really important when you're making art now I've just dipped this, this is a lira graphite water soluble there's a couple different brands that are great I love also art graph by Viarco I toured their uh, manufacturing plant in Portugal and I will tell you about that another time maybe even sharing the video Ooh, that's really dark so I'm just going and I randomly go in different squares instead of even I start moving my mark making. Now you could use colored pencils, whatever, but this is how you free yourself up. This is to take the perfectionist out of the equation. And this might change too as we do it, This the um, wetness of this. There we go. So just make some marks. We're not trying to fill the whole thing, okay? Then after I do that, I want to wet it just a little. And I want to tell you a little, a little trick. You can use uh, fixative at this point because anytime it gets wet, even with paint, it will reactivate. My art journal I'm using, by the way, is called Stillman and Burn, and I love this brand. I use the Epsilon series. And that's because it's a little bit thinner paper, which means I get more pages per art journal. And it still takes, it just takes the layers without a problem. So if you prefer to have a heavier watercolor art journal, they also have other brands. I don't always start with the water-soluble graphite, but this is my favorite way to start. Almost any painting is with big wild mark making. How many of you have taken one of my courses before, especially been able to get in there and watch the foundation essentials? That comes free with every course. Oh my goodness, that makes such a huge difference. So I'd love it if you, in the comments, would tell everybody about your experience taking my course, which course you've taken, and, and what you liked about it. I ask because I want people to know from other people's experience besides just me telling you that it's great. <laughs> I know some of my courses really needed work and Lush Landscapes was one of them and there were several others that I finished and fixed up and made better this year. Like for example, my Seascape Escape course, I revamped that and also my Oil Pastel course, which has been really, really popular. Okay, so all of this is done. It's kind of drying right now. I sometimes will use my paintbrush for mixing and sometimes I use a palette, but the truth of the matter is today I'm probably just going to start with my paintbrush and start getting some colors down. Oh, and we need white, lots of white. And like I said, I really love to just use Liquitex Professional Gesso almost all the time. I'm going to start with my boldest color. I don't really want that color pink. What I really want is a wild orange. Do you see how I just changed that with that Indian yellow hue? It's a darker yellow, so it makes this really gorgeous orangish 
pastelish orange. I was watching a show the other day that used that color for the trim in the house, and I was like, what? In the house? So, I'm just going to make some marks randomly as I see it. Maybe I'm thinking a little bit about the land. It's going to mix a bit with the uh, graphite. And I am not going to fill up every single square. Do you see I have an eye for composition even amongst my, my grid? I try to keep my grid in composition as well. It's just a little habit of mine. So a little bit of color here and there. Now I'm going to stop with that one and just keep moving on. So I love... This is the Indian yellow with just some white mixed in. And see how that's that nice buttery yellow color? So I really want that yellow to actually be more of a dominant look. So I'm going to use more. And when it mixes a little bit with that graphite, you're going to see that it turns green. Black and yellow make green. I kid you not, I've actually done a lesson on this before. I don't know where it's at now. It's probably a live one. It's still somewhere on YouTube. I'll have to find it, but black and yellow make green. I know. Who would have ever thought? So I'm not staying in the lines. Please know you do not need to stay in the lines. Look at how that's kind of turning like a good olivey green. I love that it's a transparent color as well. Now I'm going to start mixing more. I've got, uh, this is the, um, burnt sienna and it's making this gorgeous brownish color um, when I mix it with the yellow and it's also one of my darker colors so and I can mix just a little bit of white with it so do you see how all these earthy colors are just kind of this gorgeous fun out of the box what do you think we have some that are brand new to painting I love it. Well, welcome to the painting world. I have a lot of courses that are for people who are brand new at it, but I have a lot that are for those who are advancing. And next year I'll be helping artists even more into the advancing world of art and business. Yes, yes, that's my secret. I don't think it's much of a secret. I think people have heard that that's what I want to do. I'm using this really dark burnt umber, uh, raw umber. This is the beauty of painting in these grids is we just keep going and exploring and not thinking about the final outcome. This is the this is the biggest challenge I think artists new and experienced have. They want to make perfection right away. But you know what you need to do? You just need to make marks. You just need to get the paint on the page. Look, am I overthinking it? No. And I'm a professional artist. But I'm still not overthinking it. I'm just having fun and allowing this strangeness, these marks to kind of appear and, and let it be what it's going to be. And I want to make sure I'm getting more yellow on here. So I wash my brush. I don't keep going. I have to stop at some point with each color to just kind of take a break from it. Allow it to dry. Part of it is when you allow them to dry, then these pops of colors are going to be able to come through without blending. Um, now I'm going to come in. We need light. So I'm going to go ahead and use this pale color. See, again, if I added more white here and just a little teeny bit of that red, we're going to get really close. Do you see that? We're going to get really close. So you can make your own. You just have to keep playing with the colors and you can make your own of the of the colors that come right out of the tube. This is why I say limit. You don't have to buy Titan Mars Pale if you have burnt sienna and a yellow. You can make that beautiful earthy color. There's a bunch of other ways you can make it so that it looks very similar to that. Um, all right, more pink. By the way, I am obsessed with pink. I don't know what it is. Maybe my my eight-year-old heart that was denied all the things pink because I lived in a house full of people and family members that we had to share and divide. No, not that I'm upset by it, but I'm just saying I don't think I got my full, full, fair share of pink. So here I am like, please give me more pink. Right? Right now I feel like working small, but watch what happens if we change that. If I come in here with the larger brush and we start playing with that, let's just see. That's going to give us a whole different feel. I don't want to put yellow in the sky there. I want to put it here. 
but I do want more. And I am thinking landscape in, in this case, but that's only because I know the landscape course is coming soon. Um, oftentimes I will just paint randomly at little abstracts. What do you think of these colors? Are they weird or what? You know what? I love weird, by the way. I love weird and I love it when it's just like out of the ordinary and not what you're expecting. So I'm okay with it being weird. Look at how I'm just dabbing. Like I don't really care that there's any perfection right now. Have I gotten, have I gotten that in your mind yet? We don't need perfection in order to paint. We just need to get it out on paper. And the more we do it, the more we learn from our peers and from experts, the more we practice, the more that we study the work that we've done and maybe get a little feedback, that's when we'll grow. But if you're trying to grow by being perfect right off the bat, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to have fun either. And we want to have fun. Okay, I have all this paint. I don't really want to use that color. I'm going to clean my brush. I'm saving that blue, by the way. <laughs> I'm saving that blue-green color. I want to come in with just a little more of this. This is my pop of color along with... I just want to see what happens here. I'm going to have to paint with these leftover paints after I turn off the camera and see. All right, remember we mixed that yellow and cadmium red medium. That's an um, Indian yellow hue. And then more white, and we have this gorgeous hot coral color. There we go. Where else can we use that color? Our eye needs it right here. More here. Look at how it's changing as the colors kind of blend together. So good. All right, more white. And I do love to be able to make lines through it. That's the back side. Now that black is coming through. That black is really creating quite a bit of drama, isn't it? Now don't turn your nose up at what we're doing here. It's going to come together and look like a beautiful grid when we're done. All right, I'm going to wash that. I'm coming back with this brush too. Let's get a little bit of this one mixed with, i got to be careful here, I just need a little. I want to show you how cool this is. The Indian yellow hue and that umber make a green as well. It's such a pretty green. I'm going to put a little white in it and you can see so we can kind of get more muddy. I don't mind the muddy because then we're going to have some pops of other colors. That gives us kind of an ochre. Hmm. I need more white. What am I saving the blue for? That's a good question. At the end, that's when it's going to be more of a pop of a color because I don't really want it dominating. Remember, we're picking proportion. Proportion means that I'm going to have a dominant color that's really like overarching and I've got these warm corals and pinks and a little bit of yellow. Um, and then at the very end, we're going to get this bright blue in here, and it's going to make a really, like, pop. And I'm going to put more layers of white. We do need a little more of that. And I love it when you can see the under layers underneath. See how that changes it? So I'm probably going to be ready for that green in just a second there. I'm just making sure that I have enough interest. I don't want that on every page or I mean on every page on every square. So let's see what we can do to bring a little of that in and make a pop. I'm going to mix it first. There we go. I want it a little more neutral and white. Do you see how I make all these puddles and messes? But I want you to see already how this is going to look so cool. There 
I love that color. I love the mint color. It's kind of unexpected, I think. Now I'm going to do a little more of the pure, even though I've kind of messed it up because I've got so much on here. Nice. Is this interesting to you? I'd love to hear in the comments if you're finding this process interesting and if these out of the ordinary, mixing our own colors and definitely combinations that you maybe never would have thought to do. These brushes are the best. I have like jars and jars and jars of them, old and worn out, brand new ones that I just ordered. See, so you can see they're all nice and smooth and then they get all frayed, but I just go and go and go with all kinds of different um, brushes of the same brand. I just love this brand. It's, uh, again, Catalyst Princeton Polytip Bristles, and I use the flat one, and I use all different sizes of the flat, but the flat tends to be my favorite. All right, I'm looking over this, and I'm thinking, do we have good compositions in most of this? What else could this use to kind of just finish it up? Um, some of these are more interesting than others, but as a whole, they're making sense. So maybe I need some white in here that, you know expose a little bit of white with some lines in it. I do love when the underneath shows through. Um, or even some more beige. That's just mixing all these colors here. Sometimes they get a little muddied, but I will tell you what happens is I have more harmony because I haven't used all the colors in the rainbow and I am trying to limit myself just a little bit. That's what I want you to consider why I say limit your palette, limit your choices, and you know allow yourself to go wild with it. This is like really fun. Uh, definitely my weirdest <laughs> that I've created in a long time. I think we've got some. Let's see. I do, after I've created these, sometimes I come back and I say, so which ones are the most interesting ones? Which ones would I like to explore more of? Um, I don't know which one do I want a little bit more. Do they all need that green? Or can I give some of them some breathing room to be something else? I feel like that's it says white but it needs to be a little bit more color and I could start layering like this this is where the landscape feel starts coming um, and I don't make them perfectly square but sometimes my that's where my slight perfectionist tendencies come in where I'm like eh, maybe I'll give it a little more a little more color here and there. Let's see these, all these nuances and variations make a difference. Um, what my secret for whether or not it needs more white would be for me to take a photograph and see if there's enough value. But because this is light, that's light, that's light. And I do have dark colors shining through. Sometimes it works just fine. Maybe I didn't love that. That's where dabbing it back a little. Ah, that's what I call serendipity. But generally speaking, I think I like how this is turning out. I love taking this. Let's see. There's a beautiful green. We didn't even use that color, but maybe I shouldn't. Maybe it doesn't need all of the colors. But this is where the experiment comes. You can kind of see what works and what doesn't work. All right. Hello. I hope this has been a lot of fun. We had quite a few people showing up. Es Esther, 
says, you gave me advice back on tw in 2016 about limited palette, and I'm still working on that. This makes me so happy when I know that there's artists that have been thinking about ideas that I've been sharing for, like, what, five years ago? That's so fabulous. Like, I love it. I think this turned out pretty interesting, and I think the best thing you can do when you do this you know, look, it's imperfection, but it's a lot of interesting ideas. It's mark making. It's how these colors go together. And when you like just pare it down to one and say, ooh, what would that look like larger? If I just look like this one here, look at that black mark, teeny little bit of brighter green. And these, come on, that's almost like Baskin Robin colors, right? That corally pink with the browns and the and oh, I just love it. This one's kind of a hot mess, but who cares? You know, if you're not sure, come back in with another mark some other way. These are my oil pastels. There we go. Oil pastels are my little secret to everything. This one made a nice big mess. There we go. That's changing it. Fun. Play. Each time that you do this, that's what this becomes. So look at that. The ideas from this translate into a larger piece. What do you think? Like, can you see how this playful practice turns into something of a bigger impact? So all the colors and textures are now being translated into a larger piece. And from this, I can even go bigger. I can continue to practice and create a very cohesive collection if I wanted to, especially because I absolutely love these colors. I don't know about you, they're wackadoodle, which is my favorite. Wackadoodle is my favorite. So I'm just going to say <laughs> I love crazy color combinations, and this has been pushing me right out of my comfort zone. I mean, look at these like browns and greenish yellows and muddied colors next to this bright minty color. It's just so mm, perfect.